in a few minutes. And the title of the message for this morning is The Journey to the Cross Part 2, which means it is the continuation of last Sunday's <coughs> message. The Journey to the Cross. During this season of Lent, the journey of Jesus to the cross reminds us, number one, how he suffered. Number two, how he was abused, how he was humiliated. And that is essential for a reflection on our own life journey. Why? It is essential. Because along our journey, some people have suffered offenses, abuse, and disrespect. But also, some people have already enjoyed all the blessings coming from the Lord. So, the journey of Jesus to the cross illustrates how he endured all those kinds of suffering and abuse, all of that. So, whenever we feel abused or disrespected or even offended, the best person that we have to talk about is Jesus Christ. He knows all about those kinds of things. So be encouraged to present to the Lord along with your reflection on your life. Talk to Jesus and share with Jesus what has been affecting you along your journey. And his journey to the cross also shows us his determination to complete his mission. He was determined to complete his mission so that we are encouraged to complete our mission over here on earth as well. Jesus gives us hope because on the third day, he rose from the dead and he was glorified when he recovered life. So that is our hope. We have the hope of his resurrection, which is written in the scripture. And also our hope comes from Jesus' promises. He promised us, he promised us that he would be, and he actually is, walking along with us throughout our journey and to the end. He wants us to change our lives. He came to change the world. He came to change our lives for better. But he asks us to make a U-turn. We are going our own way, but he wants us to make a U-turn in order to follow him. That is the goal. He, in order for him to change us, we have to follow him. And that is the turning point of our lives, when we make our U-turn and follow him. And the gospel for today is clear in that sense. Let me read the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. And the word of the Lord says, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus Christ. And he went from there, and he saw two other brothers, James and his brother John, in the boat with their father, and they were fixing, they were repairing their nets. And he called them as well. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed Jesus. 
how impactant is this passage when we read at least three times the word immediate. Keep that in mind as we go through the, through the message. And the question is, when was the turning point of Peter and the other three men in their lives? When was the turning point of their lives? It was when they responded to Jesus' invitation. When we are invited by Jesus Christ to follow him as his disciples, what we have to think about? Let me ask that question. Should we think about something else? Should we tell Jesus, no Jesus, wait for a little bit because I still have something to do? What would be the right, the right attitude, the correct attitude, when he invites us to follow him? Let me tell you, brothers and sisters. When Jesus told, follow me, they did not hesitate to do it, regardless of what they were doing. Think about that. They were busy taking care of their business. They were busy with their lives. And what happened? Although they were working and working hard because they were trying to make money to survive, they were fixing their nets and they were uh, repairing what was necessary to go further and accomplish their good job. What happened? Nevertheless, what calls our attention is that all of them immediately left everything behind to follow Jesus Christ. It is amazing, isn't it? They immediately, they responded, and that is a step of faith. Remarkable how they reacted and re responded to Jesus' call. That attitude was the turning point of their lives. If we respond to Jesus' call properly, we should not waste time anymore. Think about that. How many times we keep insisting to do whatever we want instead of making the right decision to follow Jesus immediately? How many times you were invited to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And how many times I did that and I resisted, but the turning point of my life as well as yours is when we immediately make the decision to follow Jesus. Following Jesus changes our lives for good. And following Jesus changed Peter, Andrew, James, and John's lives for good. And Peter is the best story of a changed life in the Bible. You may find many of those instances, but let us be focused on the transformation of Peter. What happened to Peter when he followed Jesus? What happened? What happened was number one. He had a tough life. His life was not easier, easy as many of our lives are not easy. Peter had a tough life and a hell. He held a strong temper. He was a man of strong temper and he kept that kind of attitude for a while until the very moment when Jesus transformed his attitude to become a humble man. And he was ashamed of his sinfulness in the presence of Jesus. That is written. If you read the Gospels, you are going to pay attention to what happened to Peter. And I would recommend you to read the Gospels focused on Peter's life transformation as well as you read the book of Acts to see how Peter became a strong man, but not physically strong. He's strong in his faith. There was a moment when Jesus asked Peter, 
who he thought Jesus was. And he immediately responded, You are the Son of the living God. And Jesus immediately told him, Do you know why you understand I am the Son of the living God? Because my Father in heaven opened your mind. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you, we, we all may keep talking about God and keep talking about Jesus forever. We may spend 36 hours of our daily life, which is not 36 hours, but if we dedicate our lives to talk about God with people, they will never have their minds open to grasp who Jesus is because it depends on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one who is able to open our minds and touch our hearts. And then we become wise people when we understand who Jesus really is. He was not just a prophet. He was not just a, he was not just a good teacher. He was the Messiah who came to save the world. And that is important to understand. Then Peter, at the very moment when God were opened his mind and he realized who Jesus was, he felt unworthy to be in the presence of Jesus, but Jesus immediately told him, those words that you are going to find in the gospel and those words who moved Peter ahead of his mindset. Regardless of Peter's weakness, the good news is that when Peter responded and when Peter repented, Jesus preserved him to fulfill his mission to be one of his apostles. And that happens to us. When we realize who Jesus is in our lives, when we repent of our sins, that is the time when God equips us to become the one He wants us to be as His followers. As a follower, a disciple of Jesus, Peter accepts Jesus' invitation so that the Lord empowered and equipped Peter to be the pillar one of the pillars of Christ's church. That is what is expected from us. We are not expected to accomplish our role as disciples of Jesus Christ unless we understand that the one who equips us, the one who empowers us to do that is the Lord, is the Holy Spirit. Without that perception, we may try our best and we are not going to get there because we depend on the Holy Spirit. That has been the subject of our conversation on Sunday morning over here to understand that spirituality is the most important thing, thing in our lives in order to accomplish our mission before God. Also, there was a moment when Peter said that he was willing to die for Jesus. He said, Jesus, I'm going to follow you to the end. But then what happened along his journey? When Jesus was arrested and went through his trial, Peter denied Jesus three times. That is all about our journey. Our spiritual journey is like going up and down and up and down, but every time we come down, we have the, the Lord to lift us by our hands. He uses his hands to lift us up every time we are down. So that is all about our journey. Our journey is not always up. We have those stumble blocks along the journey. But on the day of Pentecost, what happened? When all the people were gathering together in Jerusalem, Peter was the first one to be used by the Holy Spirit to proclaim that the resurrection resurrected Christ was alive again to help them throughout their journey. All the people were in, in Jerusalem at that very day of Pentecost, 
They listened to Peter's message, but it was not really something that Peter delivered on his own capacity. The Holy Spirit was there and empowered Peter to preach the good news of the gospel. And all of them, even though many people were talking according to their own languages, the message was delivered. And all of them understood the good news from Jesus because the Holy Spirit is able to translate everything that we are not able to understand. And I'll tell you, some churches who have no ability to speak different languages, when someone comes, because the Lord sent people from different group, ethnic groups, people from different languages, I have seen that. When they come to the church and they listen to the word of God, although they do not speak English or whatever language, is the one that the preacher is using, they are able to understand because the Holy Spirit has the capacity to translate into our mind and into our hearts. It is a matter of feeling, not a matter of knowledge of the languages. And that is all about the Holy Spirit work within the church. And Peter was the one who was bold. He was the boldest of the apostles. He was bold. Why he was bold? Why he did not fear to tell the truth? Because the Holy Spirit was empowered him. How many times we, we are afraid to <coughs> talk about God with someone because we may think, oh, I do not want to offend anybody. That's not the point. We are supposed to be bold and to talk about the truth. The rest is up to the Holy Spirit. We should not be fear, fearing to share the good news. And finally, Peter suffered persecution and was in prison for the Lord's sake. And he was crucified upside down. I don't know if all of you are aware of that. Peter, one of the most powerful fishers of men, he was crucified upside, upside down. That was written before. That was prophesied before. Then you may think about that. We all may think about that. If we have the promise from Jesus about eternal life, we, if we have the promise that everything is going to be all right, then how can we admit that one of the most faithful servants would be crucified upside down for Jesus' sake? The promise, the promise that we have that everything is going to be all right. Everything is not going to be all right over here. Jesus never said that everything is going to be all right over here. Jesus promised that everything is going to be all right when we are going to be there in heaven. That is the right perspective of life. This is why many people, they do not understand why they are ill. Oh God, why am I ill? Why am I suffering? Jesus never promised that we would have everything perfect. Over here on earth, we have to understand the perspective. What he promised is that he's going to be with us all the days of our lives. Whatever is the situation, he's going to be walking along with us. And the bottom line, the lowly fisherman became a mighty fisher of men and one who changed many lives. I would ask you. What is your purpose? Why do you think you are here on earth? Should we think about our own accomplishments? Should we think about our own, our own possibility to live a good life? That's not the purpose. The purpose is to accomplish God's will in our lives and be instruments of God to pass unto others His love, to show how He loves us all regardless of the situation. So what? What lessons we learn from Peter's journey following Jesus? Number one, humility invites Jesus into our lives. Humility is one of the key words. 
There is something about being in the presence of God that makes us vastly aware of our downfalls. <coughs> what happens every time we fail? Last Sunday I preached about our frailty. We are frail people. We must understand that we are not strong as many of us think we are. We are frail. And according to our nature, we have to understand that the Lord is the one who gives us the ability to accomplish what he wants us to be. This ability to humble himself made Peter the perfect candidate to be a fisherman. Humility. And then Peter was enthusiastic, impulsive, and at times impatient. But for all his strengths, Peter had several failings in his life, even denying the Lord. Still, what is the good news? Still, the Lord who chose him continued to mold him into exactly who he intended Peter to be. This is the secret. That is the good news for us today. The Lord who chose us, he continues to mold our temper, to mold our personality, to be exactly the person that he wants us to be. So, church, people, the gospel, Jesus Christ, all that is written is about transformation. We are supposed to die in a different way as we came and we lived on earth. We are supposed to be transformed. But that requires from us humility and the understanding that without the help of the Holy Spirit, we will never be the one that God intends us to be. And the question is, along your journey, during this Lent season, do we want Jesus to mold us into exactly who he intends us to be? <clears throat> if you agree that Jesus is in charge and wants to mold us to be the ones he wants us to be, please say amen. amen. Do you believe that? <clears throat> Do you believe that the Lord is able to transform us to be the one he wants us to be? Or do you believe that we are going to die the same way as we were born? This is a good food for thoughts to digest along our practices of Lent and season. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks, Lord, because Peter is a good example so that, please, Lord, help us to be humble. Help us to understand how frail we are. Help us to understand how dependent we are on you, Lord, because Jesus came, not in vain, but he came to transform us. And we give thanks to you, Lord, for that. We give thanks for all the work that you have done in our lives so far. But we look forward to be totally different when we will be back home. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God may respond. Amen. Let us sing this wonderful song. <coughs>